Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to my latest video recipe. And in this video I'll be showing you how to make your own delicious cream cheese at home. And for this recipe I'll be using this fantastic soft cheese making kit from cheeseandyogurtmaking.com. I'll leave a couple of UK and USA links in the description box below the video to where you can get your hands on one of these amazing soft cheese kits. And in this one little kit there's enough ingredients and equipment to make up to 10 large batches of various soft cheeses. All you need to add is the milk. But I'll explain more as we go through the video. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on the channel's website. I'll leave a link in the description under the video or you can click on the eye icon top right of the screen to take you directly to the recipe page. I'd also like to thank my Patreon, PayPal and Super Thanks supporters for their very kind help in producing these tutorial videos. Your amazing financial support really helps with ever increasing equipment, ingredient and editing software costs. I'll be giving you all a name splash and shout out a little later in the video. Ok, let's get on with today's recipe. Ok, first off I'll quickly go through the contents of the kit. And first up is this packet of powdered rennet. And if you don't know, the rennet is there to set the milk, which is called the curds. And this particular rennet is suitable for vegetarians. Next is the sachet of cheese culture. Now this is what gives the cheese its flavour. I'll show you how to make that up a little later. And once you've followed the instructions, there is enough culture in this little sachet to make up to 30 large batches of cheese. Next is this packet of cheese salt. It's very important to use this salt in cheese making. I'll explain a little later. Equipment included in the kit is a great little cheese thermometer and it comes with a pan clip. So you can attach it to the side of your pan to keep a close eye on the milk's temperature. Also a large cheesecloth for straining the curds from the whey. Leaflet containing some of the company's information and history. Finally, a little recipe book containing 10 easy to make recipes you can make with this one soft cheese kit. And they include chevre, colic, cottage cheese, halloumi, neufchatel, paneer, quark, Casablanco, and a soft cheese recipe. The one we'll be concentrating on is this delicious and authentic cream cheese recipe. Right, on to making up the cheese culture starter. Like I said earlier, this is what gives the cheese its flavour and the best way to get the most out of this little sachet is to inoculate one litre of milk with it. Once that's done, we can freeze the culture in ice cube trays and that produces approximately 60 cubes and you only need two of those to make up one large batch of cheese. All will become clearer as we move through the video. Ok, on to making the starter culture. Pour 1 litre, that's 1 and 3 quarter pints of whole or full fat milk into a pan on your stove. Now bring that to a simmer, approximately 90 Celsius, that's 194 Fahrenheit. Use your thermometer so you know when the required temperature has been reached. And that's to kill off any bacteria that's already in the milk. Once that temperature has been reached, cover the pan and turn the heat down as low as possible and maintain that temperature for 10 minutes. Once that 10 minutes is up, you need to cool the milk down as quickly as possible to 20 Celsius, that's 68 Fahrenheit. And the best way to do that is to carefully place the pan in a sink of cold water. Now that will take approximately 10 minutes. Once your milk has cooled, open the cheese culture sachet and sprinkle it over the surface of the milk. Now whisk it in straight away vigorously. It needs to be thoroughly mixed in, so whisk for a good 30 seconds. Once mixed, quickly transfer the culture to a recently sterilised glass container. Now seal it immediately with cling film. 
covering the milk quickly reduces the chance of any airborne bacteria from accidentally getting into the milk. Now let that incubate for 22 to 24 hours at room temperature, approximately 22 Celsius, that's 72 Fahrenheit. Once the time's up, your cheese culture should now have a pleasant, sharp, fresh, clean aroma to it. And all you have to do now is to get the mixture into sterilised ice cube trays and get them into the freezer. Like me, if you've only got a couple of ice cube trays, you can keep the excess culture in the fridge for two to three days and just freeze them in batches. And if you don't want to go through making those, you can always use these single shot cheese cultures and you simply add one of these to each batch of cheese. You can buy these from the same company, but each batch of cheese will work out more expensive. Much cheaper to use the ice cube method, guys. Right, with the starter culture out of the way, we can get on with actually making this cream cheese. There's a few ways to slowly heat the milk, but I'm going to use this double boiler method in this tutorial. Now all a double boiler is, is a pan on top of another pan. The water goes in the bottom pan and the milk in the top pan. And as the water heats up, it gently heats the milk in a controlled fashion. It's always good practice to sterilise everything before starting any cheese project. You can use chemicals to do this, but I like to use boiling water as shown. And since this water is already hot, we can use that for the bottom pan. On to the preferred milk to use. Now the best milk to use in any cheese recipe is fresh form or raw milk, but that's not a realistic option for most of us townies. The next best milk to use is unhomogenized whole milk. If you live in the UK, Morrison's is one place that does stock it. I have used ordinary homogenized whole milk in the past. It does work, but you get a much better result from raw or unhomogenized milk. Right, now pour your 4 litres of milk into the top pan. Get your thermometer clipped on the side of the pan. I'm using a larger dial thermometer here so you can see it better on video. Now heat the milk to 25 Celsius, that's 77 Fahrenheit, while stirring continuously. I mentioned different ways of heating your milk. With this being a very easy cheese recipe, you can actually heat your milk by placing it in a sink of hot water. But I want to show you this double boiler method for more complicated hard cheese recipes that I'm planning to do for future videos. Once your temperature is reached, remove the pan from the heat source. Right, take two of your frozen culture cubes and place them in the milk. Or, if you're using a single shot culture, sprinkle that in now. Give it a good stir until they've melted. Now place the lid onto the pan and let it sit for one hour. That hour gives the culture time to get to work on the warm milk. And like I said earlier, it's the cheese cultures that gives the finished cheeses its flavours and textures. And you use different cultures for making different cheeses. This one has been specially designed for soft cheeses. Also, the cheese making cultures ripen the milk, rendering it acidic and in the correct form for the rennet to do its job, turning the milk into curds and whey. And it's the rennet that's going in next. Once the time's up, sprinkle the powdered rennet onto the top of the milk. Now stir the milk gently for 30 seconds, making sure it is completely incorporated into the milk. It's important that you stir gently. Vigorous stirring will cause the rennet to work too quickly. Now cover the pan and leave it at room temperature for 12 hours. And when I come back, the rennet will have converted the milk into curds and whey. Right, it's 12 hours later and it's time to strain the curds from the whey. First job is to sterilise your cheesecloth. 
and while it's still wet but well wrung out, line a colander with it that's sitting inside a bowl. OK, time's up. So have your pan close by the colander. Your milk should now have set. Your curds, the solids, should now have separated from the whey, the liquid. And in cheese making, this is known as a good set. All you have to do now is carefully spoon or ladle the curds into the lined colander. Be gentle with this and take your time. Right, there's quite a bit to transfer, so I'm going to swap to a larger ladle. In real time, this normally takes about 5 minutes to do. Once all the curds have been transferred over to the colander, bring each corner of the cheesecloth together and tie them off as shown. Carefully lift the curds from the colander to another bowl. Now you can get creative as to how you're going to hang your cheesecloth to allow the whey to slowly drip out of the cloth. I like to use this large wooden spoon threaded through the knots and I'll use my large mixer and cupboard shelf to suspend it as shown. And this is all part of the fun of cheese making guys. Once your cloth is hanging freely, leave it and let it drip over 12 hours. Right, that looks pretty good to me. Now make sure you have a big enough bowl underneath. From past experience, that white bowl I'm using will be full by morning. Right, it's 7pm at the moment, so I'll let this drip overnight and I'll be back at 7am in the morning. And at this point, I hope you don't mind if I give my three recipe books a bit of a plug. The books have lots of our favourite recipes from our work kitchens in them. All three books are available in the website shop along with lots of other equipment I use in the videos. And by popular demand, the skeleton style oven gloves are now available too. Just click on the eye icon top right of your screen and that will take you to the website shop where all of these items are available now. Right, it's 12 hours later, time to see what we've got. Even if there's still the odd drip coming out of the cloth, it's done. Whatever you do, don't be tempted to squeeze any more whey out of it. It does need to have a certain amount of whey left in it. OK, untie the knots in the cheesecloth and turn out the now cream cheese into a large bowl. And the first job I like to do is to weigh the cheese. And looking at the scales, we have just over 1.2 kilograms, that's almost 3 pounds, of pure top quality cream cheese. And much better and a lot cheaper than you can buy in any of the stores. Right, all you have to do now is decide what you're going to do with it. It's so versatile. I'm going to divide mine into two equal batches. One will be my wife's favourite, spring onion and garlic, and my favourite is paprika, chilli and garlic. You can simply add 1% cheese salt to have it plain. It's up to you whatever you flavour yours with. A quick word on cheese salt. It's important to use proper salt when making cheese. Cheese salt is a high purity sun dried sea salt with absolutely no additives at all. Normal table salt, on the other hand, is fortified with iodine and contains other chemicals and anti-caking agents and definitely should not be used in cheese making. I'll start with making up my favourite. In this little dish I have half a teaspoon each of paprika, chilli and garlic granules and one teaspoon of cheese salt. All you need to do is to add it to the cream cheese and thoroughly mix it in using a spatula. I hope you can see how smooth and delightful this homemade cream cheese looks. Now in this one I'm using ordinary paprika, but smoked paprika is even better. I just don't have any at the moment. Right, I'll cover that one and I'll get on with making my wife's favourite cream cheese. And that is three to four spring onions chopped fine. And if you think spring onions is a bit strong for you, you can use chives instead. They have a much milder onion flavour. And in this little dish, there's half a teaspoon of garlic granules and one teaspoon of cheese salt. 
And once again, using a spatula, I'll get it all blended together. OK, I'll have a little taste of that one. And it's absolutely delicious. And after two or three days in the fridge, it gets even better as it matures. All I have to do now is to get it tubbed up into containers. And when I come back, I'll do that and have a proper taste test. And there you go. Six 200 gram portions of the very best top quality cream cheese you'll ever taste. Most of it will go to family and some into the freezer as it does also freeze very well. So don't worry about any getting wasted. What you don't use straight away will stay in the freezer for at least three months. And shelf life in the fridge I'd say about six to seven days. And that's just one of the ten soft cheeses you can make from this one little kit. Right, time for a proper taste. And that is so good. You would never believe this was made at home. It's so smooth, rich and creamy. Absolutely first class. I remember the first time my son Stephen tried it. And bear in mind, he's a very good professional chef himself. He said it was the best cream cheese he'd ever tasted. And coming from him, that was really something as he has very high standards and doesn't give compliments easily. He even gave it a big thumbs up. And as promised at the beginning of the video, here is the latest list of my Patreon, PayPal and Super Thank You button supporters. And they are Susan Groves, Sean, Shannon Doyle, James Oliver, Kate Bostek, Magnus Adelius, Ronald Mitchelson, David Jill, Neil Blythin, Carl Brand, Carl E. Brand, Wild Will, Judy Humphrey, Ellen McSawley, Jens K, Sue Devereaux, Marnie Anderson, Colleen Ferreri, Crystal Reed, Dave Holdren and Paul Howes. And there's also two who wish to remain anonymous. Thanks very much guys, I really do appreciate all that you do in supporting the channel. Well thank you again for watching, please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that, you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in your kitchen and bye for now.